Okay, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be talking about CSS, and I'm gonna show you how you can include CSS in your HTML web pages. So there are three ways that we can include CSS. That is inline, internal, and external. So let me go ahead and just show you an example of each. So I'm gonna go back to my index.html. How about I just close out all the rest of these files? And I'm also going to do Command B, and that will close my sidebar and your editor may be different based on the one that you're using. So let's add some inline styles here. Let's say that we wanted this home button to have a blue background. So what I could do is I could simply add some inline styles and we did this a little bit before. So I can say style equals, and I said I want a background of blue. So if I save that, we go back here and reload, you can see that we get a background of blue. I could also say that I want the color to be white and I reload and sure enough, you see that the styles have been updated. Now inline styles is kind of a bad practice. You typically don't include styles directly in the element itself. Usually you would want to give the element a class and then you could use that class multiple times. So this is inline styles. The next step is to use internal styles. So what we could do is we could add an internal style to the head of our document. So we could say style type equals text slash CSS, and we can just add our styles directly in here. And there are a few ways that you can gain access to a specific element and apply some styles to it. And the first way that you could do that is by giving the element a class. So maybe we just want to call this blue BG. So we could reference this class with the dot symbol. And I can say blue dash BG, and we want to give this a background of blue, and we want to give it a color of white. And if I actually reload the page, we're not gonna see any difference because it just applied the same styles. You can see if we actually changed the background to green and reloaded, it would update those styles. So the good thing about using these classes is that we could apply this to any element. So I could then apply it to my title here, and if I reload, then sure enough, you can see that those styles get applied. So typically you don't include inline CSS. It's best practice to use either internal or external, which is the next way that we're gonna show you how to include CSS in your page. But before I jump over to that, I do want to show you that we can add a selector here so we can say that any class with blue BG, we want to apply these styles. We can also select it by like an ID. So if I were to say ID equals blue bg we would then change this to hashtag blue bg and this would reference the id but you'll notice that you typically do not want to include this id multiple times that's why it's good to use classes in those case if you want to use those styles multiple times so we can apply styles using the class or the identifier and we can also select elements specifically so any type of tag say even the body the h1 or an a tag we can reference those elements just by saying H1. So any heading ones, we want to apply these styles. Let's change this back to blue. And if I reload, you can see that those styles get applied. I could actually change this to the A tag, and now all of our links will have those styles. If I reload, sure enough, the links have the styles. So we can select any type of element that we want. We could even say the body. So we want the body to have a background of blue, and color of white. And if I reload, sure enough, we see that on the page. So before I show you the third way of including styles on your page, I want to tell you kind of why CSS is called cascading style sheets. Because right here we're saying that we want the color to be white and the background of blue. But now let's say that we then apply some styles to our heading one tag, and we want our heading ones to have a background of green. You can see now that the styles have just cascaded down. So we said the body has a background of blue, but the H1 has a background of green. So we're gonna set the background for that. We can then also go into the H1 even deeper, say that maybe we had a span element inside of it. We can say H1 span, maybe we want a background of red. So now if I were to actually add a span, we would then have a background of red for this span element. Reload, and now we have a background of red. Okay, 
So I've just shown you how to do the inline styles, the internal styles, and now the third way, which is the most common, is to use in external styles. And to do that, in the top of your head, you will actually use the link CSS, and we'll say link, the relationship or the rel is style sheet, and then we need to provide a link to our specific style.css. So we could call this file anything we want, but I think we're gonna stick with style.css. And I'm actually going to create a new folder and say CSS, and inside of that folder, I'm gonna create a new file and call it style.css. So now I need to change the href to CSS slash style.css. And let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, so now we've just included the external style.css. And let me apply some styles here. So let's say that we want the body to have a background of green. We reload that. And now you can see that those styles get applied. So using an external style sheet is nice because we can then include this in multiple pages. We don't have to have styles specifically in one page. So those are the three most common ways of including CSS in your page. And once you include CSS in your page, you then need to be able to select the selectors and apply some styles to them. And that's how you can make your web page look pretty. So before we close out the video, I do want to show you the basic syntax that we've just been adding styles to our style.css or inline styles. So first we have the selector element, which is the H1. Let me bump this up. So we have the H1 and then we open our declaration and we close it with the curly brace. And then inside of every single CSS element, we want to apply a property and a value. So the property could be something like background and maybe the value is blue. So we save that and we reload and now we get the background of blue and we could also apply a property of color and give it a value of white and reload and sure enough, those styles get applied. So CSS is really about learning all these different properties and values that you can use to apply styles to your HTML elements. So that's what we will be covering in the next couple of videos is these properties and values and kind of how to reorganize your page using CSS and make it look quite a bit prettier. So that's it for now. I will see you in the next video.